Hello, my name is Carolina Urrutia and I am the Secretary for the Environment for Bogota, Colombia. We're very happy to be able to participate, even if it's only with this short video, in this important event. Because we really think that transitioning cities, cities that are taking climate change profoundly seriously in order to guarantee that we will be able to be carbon neutral and that we will be resilient cities over the next 50 years, these cities have a lot to learn from one another. And this is the first thing I wanted to underscore. The benefits of working in city networks mainly are around learning learning from opportunities that other cities have taken, whether they've been successful or not. I think failures or not full successes are one of the main opportunities for learning from other cities, not only in terms of policies and their content, because I think most of the cities that are similar in scope are doing more, mainly the same thing and developing very similar policies. But we do have to learn from one another in terms of stakeholder participation, in terms of how to work more successfully, both with the private sector and with the national government, one of the biggest challenges we have, and also with civil society organizations. In Bogota, we are working within every single radius in terms of cooperation. We work with our region. Uh, Bogota is an 8 million people city with around 2 million people that come in and out of the city every day. But we are, of course, very interdependent with the immediate region. That is why we have developed a framework even going to the Constitution and modifying the things that we need to be able to work as a region, as a city region. Second, we're working, of course, with uh, other cities in the country that, say, that face similar problems, both in air quality, climate change, and of course, with issues related to biodiversity. But we're also working with city networks across the planet. Uh, probably the forum that we're working most actively with is C40. Our mayor is currently a vice president of C40, and we're taking great opportunities in terms of what C40 is putting forth in analy analytical work, but also in communications and in a policy development across the board. So we definitely think that working as a network gives us great opportunities, A, for learning, and B, also for communicating what we have in common and the very significant challenges that we also face together. I think in C40, one of the issues we have learned is that many times cities are a lot more forward, uh, in, particularly in climate change, than national governments. We tend to take bigger risks, particularly because we're seeing the costs of climate change on the ground a lot more strongly, usually, than national governments are. Bogotá's green growth strategy is the strategy in which we are working on most of our sustainable production and consumption strategies. Specifically, what we're trying to do is to become a city that prioritizes a circular economy and that identifies and strengthens all businesses that are green and that make an improvement in terms of social and environmental terms. One of the initiatives that we're most proud of is a network that we launched very recently, our Circular Fashion Network, which looks into every single chain in the production chain chain of fashion in Bogota to identify the means, the actors, and the platforms needed to collaborate and ensure that circularity is a possibility in an industry as waste intensive as fashion. But of course, we're not only working on circular economy in the fashion networks. We're also working on circular economy in the way we plan and build our city. Distances between the places where we dispose our solid waste and where we have the opportunity to reuse, recycle, and reincorporate into our production means is one of the biggest strengths of our new master plan, which we put forward last year. Spacing the city, organizing the city around circularity is one of the main strengths that from the government we can give so that markets work out how to better use, for example, the, the waste or the, the residues from the building industry to reincorporate them into new buildings. We're also, of course, strengthening every business opportunity that we can find for our green entrepreneurs. Those who are working to do uh, to develop businesses that have a very low environmental impact and that are looking, for example, to biodiversity as one of the main strengths and um, competitiveness 
sources within entrepreneurship in the city. We're also looking, of course, of course, to diversify the way we deal with our solid waste. Bogota is a couple of hundred years late. We're still burying most of our solid waste, and we're exploring new waste to energy alternatives that will give the city the energy that we, that we need and will lower the environmental impact of our solid waste across the board. We're also working, of course, a, to build the water treatment plant that haven't build, been built in the city. Around 70% of a, the water in the city goes back into our rivers without any sort of treatment. And one of our main investments over the next two years will be to lower that percentage of water that is not treated before it goes back into our rivers. Bogota has many programs, both in air quality, natural resource management, and of course, in climate change that we are very proud of. I'm gonna mention two or three that we're very proud of. The first one is Mujeres Que Reverdecen, women who are regreening the city. It's a conditioned cash transfer program that works with some of the most vulnerable women in Bogota, around 5,000, to strengthen their employability, teaching them about preserving green spaces, gardening, planting trees, and of course the importance of the environment across the board. The transfer is that we give them monthly is for about 20 hours of work per week, and they receive an amount a little below, about 20 or 30 percent below the minimum wage. This program has been a success not only in improving the autonomy and economic stability of some of the most vulnerable families in the city. This program has not only improved the, the autonomy of the women and the economic situations of some of the most vulnerable families in the city. It has also built women's network, networks of solidarity that have built new economic opportunities, new jobs, new entrepreneurships, new ways of taking care of their children or of guaranteeing food security within their families. What we're learning is that most of these women need time off, jobs, but also the opportunity to work with other women and improve their economic situation. The second program that we're very proud of is how we've been able to move a lot quicker over the past two and a half years than ever before in replacing the technology in our mass in transportation systems. We've now, right now, Bogota is the city outside of China with the most electric buses in the world. And with the metro lines that we are building and that we put in our master plan, we're going to see a massive change in our emissions over the next 10 years. Bogota is considered one of the main bicycling capitals in Latin America. I know European cities are very um, resentful when we talk about our advantages in bike usage in the city, but we're really putting forward a, an, an initiative to redistribute public space, not only to create new bike lanes, which we've created, created over 90 kilometers of, but also of thinking of every new road in, in the city or of every major public work as an opportunity to redistribute public space, taking a little space away from cars and giving it to mass mobility systems, to bicycles, and of course, to those people that are walking in our city. Proximity, the idea of a 15 minute city is a little impossible for a city with over 8 million inhabitants, but in Bogota, we're planning and building the 30 minute city where all services and all and work, employment and opportunities are within a 30 minute radius. That's what we put forward in our master plan and that's the city, the city that we're building towards the future. Being a city in transition is being a city that is making sacrifices and gaining a lot for the future. For Mayor Claudia Lopez, these sacrifices, the public debate around taking space away from cars, the debate around being a city that doesn't invade its green or rural areas, but rather that grows to be a dense and more compact city. These are all political sacrifices that have to be made in the present to ensure our future. This is a decision that Mayor Claudia Lopez made from the first day of her government and a decision that we're all see, already seeing the fruits of. We're very proud to be a part of this event and to be a city in transition. Thank you for the opportunity.